Hey guys, Mike here from Lunch Money Comics. I'm at the awesome and massive Wicked Con in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm here with the entire family, actually. Should be a really fun time. Let's go check it out. I'm here with Nick from Nick's Comic Strip, yeah. good friend of mine from Nick Danvers, Massachusetts, and he's got some awesome books, as usual. Come on down, take a look. We got 129, we got oh, 181, how do you go, what do you say? Awesome stuff as usual, Nick. Make sure if you're not already, <laughs> click below, <laughs> click subscribe if you haven't. <laughs> click below and subscribe, the guy does a great job. He's a family man, he's out on the look for books. I mean, what else do you want? There you go. Doing my plug for me, thanks Nick. <laughs> Round of applause. National Cartoonist Society. We have my daughter getting into a conversation about. They fall into quicksand and they get chased by hornets and they get out of trouble using a yo yo. He blasted off and they went back to the moon and they make these really weird moon creatures. And on the way back to Earth, the only people that can save the Earth. A lot of omnibuses. Cool spinner rack. <laughs> Alex Sophia, awesome. Original art. Yeah, I'm looking to play golf this week. I bet you can do it. I could. Well, I've already been swinging my <laughs> Not here, but I'm home. That's a big old wall of books, and it's uh, Janus Collectibles, no surprise. Okay, this is very impressive. <laughs> awesome. Okay, these might be the coolest thing I've ever seen. Oh. What did I lose? Bishop? Sorry, thank you. Just one. Awesome. Thank you. These are super cool. So the Blue Man Group was one of the reasons we wanted to bring the kids today. <laughs> it's actually quite impressive how many people, uh, artists, they have here today. It's very, very impressive. Great names. How are you guys? All right. Bill Jimenez signing the Wonder Woman Historia. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. I absolutely love this book. Absolutely love it. Uh, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. Um, uh, we put a lot of love and time into that book, so glad that it looks uh, like you it. received it well. Uh, no, it's amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much. It was nice meeting you. I actually have some stuff for Rick Leonardi, believe it or not. So, Jack, your favorite superhero is? Cyclops. Cyclops. And Mr. Rick Leonardi has decided to draw Cyclops. a Cyclops for Jack. How cool is that? Tricky. I don't think so, but it's true. Yeah, Cyclops is tricky. It's hard to emote Cyclops when he gets exactly. his eyes, you know? Exactly right. Ben taught you about the inking? 
Wow, that's awesome. Quick people there. Yeah? Sailing along, doing great, and then you do something like that. Alright, Jack. Alright, Cyclops, you have. Cyclops, buddy. Let me see. Wow. That is awesome. Thank you so much. What do you think, Jack? Pretty great, right? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, and Sam chose Spider Gwen. Ghost Spider, Spider Woman, whatever she goes by these days, right? Yeah. Hey Sam, let me see. What do you think? There she is. is that good? Awesome, that is really cool. That is amazing. Thank you so much. You get your hood up too, you look just like her. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's awesome, guys. And of course, I had to get a couple of copies of one of my favorite childhood books signed. Rick Leonardi and his wife are fantastic people. That was pretty darn awesome of them. Awesome. Highlight of the day, right guys? Wow, that's amazing. Spider Punk. All these are amazing. Oh, the bookmarks are cool. Hey, Spider Punk. Real. <laughs> All right, we're heading to the second part of the con right now, which has uh, more like the voice actors and stuff from X-Men 97, which uh, I'm excited to check out. Let's head on over there. All right, we have room number two. Let's head through here. Ooh, very cool. Uh, we're gonna head over here to the uh, X-Men tables. Here we go. So we have the voice actors from X-Men anime series. Tony Daniels is the voice of uh, Gambit over there. We got uh, Holly Chu does the voice of Jubilee. We Agostini, Roberta Da Costa, Sunspot. Very cool. Catherine Disher, Jean Grey. And look at this. Wow, that's crazy cool. How's it going? Wow, that's amazing. That is awesome. It's just a lot of really cool stuff at this con, guys. I mean, it's just everything you could possibly imagine. It's great. There's a lot of stuff here from me, stuff from my kids, some even stuff from my wife, which is always a plus. Jack, get a life. Bad dad joke. You're used to it. <laughs> Amazing D and D dice here. And some of them have uh, dragon eyes in them. More glass and gemstone dice. That is cool. Nervous to touch them. <laughs> wow, incredible stuff, man! Awesome. Oh, Beautiful. Thanks a lot. Yeah. That's awesome. So I see a lot of artists here, but I have to stop really and give a deeper look to here. Uh, Brandon Kenny, because his work is ludicrously good. So this is all original stuff I'm looking at here? That is unbelievable. Downton Abbey. Paul Rudd. <laughs> oh, very cool. Pick one that looks the best. You like the Swamp Tales? Um, we have, I don't know what this one is. That one's like a like Big Bang Theory. Kind uh, okay, of. she like probably went like that. Comedy. And we have more Mighty Mascots. Any of these uh, jump out to you? Yeah, I knew you were going <laughs> to choose that one. Yeah, you got to sign it. 
So Sam chooses the uh, the full first three issues of Mighty Mascots. She read the first one. And I'm here, of course, with Keith Gleason, who was in a recent video of mine. Uh, great guy, runs Plastic City Comic Con, absolutely. And uh, got to get the book from you when I can. Awesome. Thank you right. so much, Mike. No, happy. Watch this guy's channel, it's <laughs> awesome. All right, right, look at that. And let me give you some other stuff. Hang there on. There you go, Sam. Sam, here's a bookmark for you. All right. And also, Sam, I'm going to give you three of the Mighty Mascots uh, trading cards. It has their nutritional facts on the back. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Enjoy. Awesome, Keith. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. And I waited too long. All the voice actors went off to a panel, so I will have to catch them at the next con. <laughs> All right, I'm here with uh, Michael Golden, and I have a couple of books that I want him to sign. Uh, well, I can't sign it on here. Well, I could, on the planet, yep. All right, here with Michael Golden. How you doing, sir? To get one of my favorite Nightcrawler covers signed of all time. Nightcrawler. As a Nightcrawler fan, you know, <laughs> one of the better ones. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Uh, we weren't here very long, but we had an absolutely awesome time. Didn't we, Sam? Uh, we got some amazing stuff. We have a pretty good day planned in Boston, but uh, let's go back to the house, show you guys everything we picked up. So there you go, guys. That was Wicked Comic Con in Boston, Massachusetts. An awesome and huge comic book convention that comes to Boston every year, or at least for the last three years. And uh, yeah, it's a great show. I actually went last year. It was in a different location. I went with my son and my godson, and as great as the show was, it was really crowded. Uh, the location it was in, just, you know, a lot of people crammed in there and talking to some of my vendor friends who were set up there. They had a hard time getting in and out and setting up. Well, this year, it was in the beautiful Weston Hotel down in the Boston Seaport District, and man, what a beautiful venue. Plenty of room for everyone, and they had a little bit of something there for everyone. They had, of course, comic books. They had tons of other things, you know, like uh, they had crafts and things like that. They had cosplayers. You had Blue Man Group showed up. Uh, and, of course, they had tons of comic book creators. And I was already planning on going. I wasn't really sure which day I was going to go. But I have to give a huge shout-out and thank you to my friend Randy House. Randy was one of the coordinators of this event. I met him at another show earlier this year. We talked about this event. Also talked about another show that he's coordinating in New Hampshire, the Southern New Hampshire Comic Bash in October. And, uh, yeah, I told him I was trying to get up there. I wasn't sure which day. And he told me... Well, if you do come on Sunday, the Blue Man Group's going to be here, and I will leave tickets for your kids. So I asked my wife, hey, do you want to get the whole family to drive into Boston? The kids were excited about it. We decided to do it, make a whole day of it. We actually not only went to this show, we went out uh, for lunch afterwards, and we went to the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum, a fantastic and gorgeous art museum in Boston. Uh, unfortunately, known more of these days for an infamous... Uh, art heist from 1990 that still remains unsolved, but it's an unbelievable museum. It's beautiful. We all loved it, although the kids care way more about the art heist. But as parents, we'll take whatever we can get. All around, guys, a fantastic day. I can't speak highly enough about Wicked Comic Con in Boston. Uh, definitely, if you're ever in the Northeastern United States, keep your eyes open for this one, guys. It's a pretty great one. And I got some pretty awesome stuff. Uh, not a ton of stuff, but definitely some interesting stuff I can't wait to share with you including especially some fantastic original comic art that was gifted to my kids by an incredibly generous and talented comic book artist. I can't wait to show it to you guys. Before I do, you guys know the drill. If you want to support the channel, head on down, hit that like button, and you can follow me on Instagram under lunchmoneycomics.ig, where incidentally I posted some bonus pictures of this amazing event I got to share with my family. Actually, first up, I want to talk about some of the awesome features they had at this show. Uh, you saw the Blue Man Group. Uh, they showed up, you know, right around lunchtime. And uh, for those of you that have ever seen Blue Man Group before, they're really funny. They kind of walk around silent, interacting with people, you know, jumping in front of selfies and things like that. Uh, they were really funny. Uh, always good to have them around, although uh, my daughter thought they were a little creepy. But uh, they were pretty fun to watch them, you know, interact with all the fans. Also, you saw that um, my family and I actually took some pictures uh, in front of this, I don't know what you'd call it, a collage, a whole bunch of life-size statues of the X-Men 97 team. Yeah, that was put together by a guy named Greg Marayo. And uh, yeah, evidently he's on Instagram. I'll put a link to it down in my description. You can see some videos of him sort of making these from, I think, just like regular mannequins. And they were incredible. I mean, they were like shell-shaded. They looked just like the cartoon in 3D. It was absolutely bonkers. And uh, yeah, we took some great photos. We had a great time. We were in like Professor X's wheelchair 
it was awesome. One of the coolest setups I've ever seen at a comic show. So definitely check him out, guys. Again, I'll put that down uh, in the description. Um, who else did we see? We saw, oh, the original voice actors for X-Men 97 were there. Um, yeah, pretty cool. And some of them, of course, X-Men you know, 92, the original animated series. Uh, there was a whole bunch of them there. Some of them did cancel. Uh, I kind of feel bad, though. I was pretty excited to see them. You know, I wore the shirt and everything. You saw them briefly in the footage. Uh, but when I saw them, you know, they were talking to some people. I said, well, let's let's do a round. I had some people I was looking for. When we came back around, they were gone. They went off and did a panel together. and We had, you know, an appointment to go to the museum. So I didn't get to meet them, unfortunately. But I will see them at some upcoming comic book shows. It was still pretty cool to, to see them. And my kids love the cartoon. So it's kind of neat to point them out. Like, hey, he's the voice of Gambit. She does Jubilee. Uh, it was pretty cool. Speaking of the X-Men, uh, you saw this in the footage. Man, this is cool. Uh, so there was a vendor there. And I wrote down the name here. They're called Awesome Minis and Autographs. And they make uh, custom Lego miniatures. But just to be clear, these are not uh, official, you know, trademark Lego minifigures. They make these custom. But I mean, looking at them, guys, you couldn't tell the difference. They're perfect. And they had, you know, every genre you could possibly want they had there. But of course, come on. X-Men 97 was there. Uh, I didn't get all of them, but I got a whole bunch. We got, uh, of course, Beast, Gambit with a playing card right there. We have Rogue. Storm with a mohawk, very cool. Uh, we have brown suit Wolverine. Uh, we have, of course, Cyclops. We have Jean Grey. My boy Nightcrawler. I've never seen a Nightcrawler figure before. I don't think they exist. Uh, we have Jubilee blowing bubblegum. And we have Bishop. Uh, the only ones I didn't get, I didn't get uh, Magneto. We do have a Magneto minifigure upstairs in our Lego collection, a real one. Uh, I didn't get uh, Cable and I didn't get Morph. I'm kind of kicking myself, but these weren't like super cheap. They were five bucks each or, or uh, five for 20 so I only got eight. This is probably the most money I spent in the entire day by far. But guys, these are amazing. As an X-Men fan, my family loves Lego. So this was a, an automatic buy. Absolutely. Let me know down in the description if you are a Lego fan and if you like these guys, even if they aren't actual, you know, trademarked Lego products. Um, a couple other things. You know, I got this really cool bookmark uh, for a good friend of mine, Ricky from All Sorts of Words. He loves bookmarks. He uses a different bookmark for every single book he reads. He's a big fan of Superman, especially the Richard Donner film. Here we see Christopher Reeve. Uh, Superman and Clark Kent. I thought it was awesome. It's metal, actually. Very cool. So uh, this video is coming out after I give this to Ricky, hopefully. So uh, it should be a surprise for him. Uh, so yeah, that was all sort of the uh, the little things kind of I picked up for myself. But my kids, of course, uh, were into all sorts of stuff there. Uh, I think I mentioned this in the past. My daughter, who I don't think has ever appeared on a Lunch Money Comics video before this one, uh, she loves graphic novels. She's actually an aspiring artist in her own right. She loves to draw and uh, she loves to read graphic novels. In fact, exclusively, this is what she pretty much gets from the library. Uh, and she got a couple to take home. The first one is this one here, Schnauzer and Tater Toes take a hike. Uh, this is written by Rick uh, Stromoski. And uh, yeah, I was talking with some other people. I go over and my wife and daughter are talking to him. He was a, just a great guy. Great with the kids. You can tell he uh, he signed this for my daughter. He uh, I think he put a little remark in it. Yeah, right there. Uh, very cool. So my daughter picked this up. Uh, she has some reading material. Uh, she was pretty excited about it. And then, of course, you saw my buddy uh, Keith Gleason. I've talked about him very recently on my channel. He's an awesome independent comic creator. Uh, and this is his main title, The Mighty Mascots which are basically serial mascots that fight crime like superheroes. Uh, my daughter's read the first issue, but this is actually a collection of the first three issues. So she's pretty excited uh, to read the two issues she hasn't read before. That was pretty cool. And of course, Keith uh, has tons of cool swag to give to the kids. Uh, he had a ton of stuff for her. He gave her, of course, a Mighty Mascots bookmark, uh, some <laughs> uh, trading cards. Uh, it's really funny. These Mighty Mas Mascots actually have stats, and they are, of course, nutritional. Uh, sorry, nut original facts. Uh, pretty cool right there. Uh, gave her, uh, let's see, we got some stickers, of course, and we have an eye patch uh, from this character here. Captain Honey Flakes, pirate eye patch. Pretty cool. Uh, Keith's great with the kids as well. Uh, you know, these are really, really cool. If you're looking for some great reading material uh, for your kids, again, I'll put links to uh, all of this stuff down below in my description. Definitely worth checking out. So as I mentioned, there was a ton of of comic book content creators there, artists and writers, a lot of independent creators, and a lot from, you know, mainline DC and Marvel comics. And uh, like I said, guys, I wasn't sure which day I was going, and we had to leave kind of early to make it to Boston on time. So I just kind of grabbed some stuff really quickly before we ran out the door of some people who I knew was going to be there. And uh, this first one, guys, I'm pretty excited about. It is this. So this is Wonder Woman Historia the Amazons. This was a three-part uh, larger format comic series all about the history of the Amazons, and it has absolutely incredible art in it. And who did that art? 
Phil Jimenez, and Phil was there signing, and he signed this for me for free. I love it when they do that, guys. Very cool. You know, I heaped very high praise on him uh, when I saw him because this book really is magnificent. Really, really cool. And uh, yeah, you know what's really neat too, guys? I ended up getting this comic book at an indoor flea market for $3. He signed it for free. What a cool thing to add to my collection on the cheap. And, uh, and I, I know I've mentioned this on, in the past, but whenever I have something signed, I always write, you know, who signed it? when and where right there on the backing board and if i have some sort of sticker or souvenir from the show i put that in there as well again uh, i don't need like a coa or anything like that these are just for my personal collection uh super happy to meet phil jimenez and have him sign this uh kelly sue deconic wrote this one if i ever meet her i'll have her sign it as well super cool uh another person uh again this is a last second thing i saw they were going to be there was michael golden and i recently got this comic book which he did the cover and it's this this is the saga of Kristar. Crystal Warrior number six. Again, I talked about this very recently on my channel. Uh, this is from a series from like 1983, 1984. Basically, it was Marvel selling toys that were kind of like He-Man, right? Uh, and a couple of cool characters crossed over from the mainline Marvel Universe to this sort of, you know, space fantasy realm like Doctor Strange and, of course, my favorite character, Nightcrawler, you see right there. And uh, the cover was done by Michael Golden. Michael Golden is actually mostly known for Micronauts. I actually brought a Micronauts number one, but he did charge for his autographs, and I don't really care about Micronauts number one. I'm trying to save some money, so I just had him sign this. One kind of funny thing about it, his name is Michael Go Golden. He signs it MG, but when he signed it fast, it looks like he wrote no. Is that just me? See what, I, see what I'm talking about? No. I don't know. It made me laugh. The kids thought it was funny. Uh, happy to get the signed. Cool comic book, right? But there is one more comic book artist we need to talk about. You saw him in the footage. It was Rick Leonardi creator of Miguel O'Hara, a.k.a. Spider-Man 2099, a character I absolutely loved as a kid. I've actually seen Rick at comic book shows in the past, but I didn't have anything for him to sign. Uh, well, this time I remember, like I said, I left early in the morning. I remember last second and I grabbed two copies of Spider-Man 2099, number one, one for me, one for my son. And of course, he signed both of them. Uh, I see all the information's on the back with the stickers. So I have two first appearances of Spidey 2099 uh, signed by the creator. Very, very cool. And if it was just this, guys, that I got, I'd be pretty happy. But I started making some small talk with not only Rick, but with his wife. Come to find out, Rick is actually from the North Shore of Massachusetts, where I'm from. Uh, and I mentioned offhandedly that, you know, the whole family, we were there going to the show, and then we were going to that Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum, to which Rick's wife said, that's my favorite museum. She went over and started talking to my wife, and then Rick said, hey, call your kids over. I like doing original sketches for kids of their favorite comic book character, which I thought was amazing. And this was for free. He did this for free. So I said, hey, kids, come over. You know, what do you want him to draw? And my son picked Cyclops. Uh, and wow, this is amazing, guys. Rick did this. Uh, this is awesome. I mean, yeah, it's Jack's favorite character, but as an X-Men fan, this is pretty awesome. And a funny story to go along with it. Rick started drawing him like in profile. And then after a few seconds, he's like, nah, I don't like it. Cyclops is difficult. And he basically threw that one away and started over and came up with this awesome upward looking angle absolutely fabulous what a cool piece of art guys very very impressive how it came out and he took his time with this it wasn't like a quick sketch he definitely took his time uh, and then my daughter had a tough time picking which character to do she almost did Batgirl but she settled on spider Gwen Gwen Stacy she was actually wearing a, a spider Gwen you know t-shirt and hoodie so of course she had to get spider Gwen uh very cool and of course you know Rick's good at drawing you know different variations of spider people so that was awesome and guys you know you know, he and other artists like him often charge uh, quite a bit of money for sketches like this, like when an adult asks. Like I said, these were free. He does this for all the kids. I couldn't believe it. And these are fantastic. I can't wait to get these framed up and hang them in the kids' rooms. They were blown away. And my daughter, especially as an aspiring artist, uh, she loved just watching him do this. What an incredible and generous thing for him to do. Just wonderful people, Rick and his wife. Wonderful meeting both of you and talking with you. Definitely, guys, I'll put whatever uh, information I can find on Rick and his art down below in my description. I think most people are familiar with Spider-Man 2099 now because of the Into the Spider-Verse movies. But definitely, guys, he's a fantastic artist and a very generous one at that. So, guys, uh, that is it. Head on down to my comments and let me know what you think of everything that you saw. What do you think of this custom art? What do you think of, you know, the signed books? Uh, what do you think of the Legos? It's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, let me know what you think of all the amazing things that we saw. Guys, it was a fantastic day all around. There was something there for the whole family, even my wife. I can't speak highly enough about it. And that is it. In the meantime, keep hunting for comic books in strange and unusual places. Thank you all so very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.